If you've ever read a conversation on the internet where two people are debating which operating system is better, you'll have noticed that there's a particular set of pros and cons that are associated with each operating system, and they're fairly conventional and standard. Things like Arch Linux is simple, but has System D, which means it sucks unless you like System D, or Ubuntu has, is big and bloated and difficult to deal with, and so on and so forth. Uh, however, quite often when the conversation delves to slightly more detailed specifics than that, very rarely is there ever any evidence presented. People just say something over and over and over again, and then it just you know becomes true by virtue of that. And this is particularly true pertaining to OpenBSD. Um, I have seen a lot of this sort of thing said both for and against OpenBSD, and very rarely does anybody ever actually back up what it is that they are saying. In this particular video, what I want to do is look at documentation. And I just have one quick example that I thought of uh, that I can use to provide some actual evidence in this conversation. So if you are unfamiliar with the documentation argument for OpenBSD, it runs a little something like this. Uh, OpenBSD is really, really well documented. The manual pages are, there are manual pages for everything, which is demonstrably true. But beyond that, the manual pages are of very, very, very high quality, uh, whatever that means. And furthermore, the documentation is taken so seriously that any any mistake or issue in the man page is considered a bug in the same vein as an actual software bug. Now, that latter case is demonstrably true. That is the way that the OpenBSD project operates, but that in and of itself doesn't make the documentation good. Uh, and just frankly speaking, on the Linux side of things, I can't say that I have ever knowingly encountered a situation where the manual was wrong and it caused me any problem. But in principle, if the documentation isn't considered as important, that is definitely a thing that could happen. Uh, the problem, though, with this is that when you're talking about high-quality manuals, that becomes very subjective. And so I just want to show you what the difference is between a, a, a prototypical example of an OpenBSD manual and a prototypical example of a Linux manual, just to show you what effect that actually can have in practice outside of any going in and like analyzing the writing or anything like that, which is kind of a fruitless exercise because, you know, it's very subjective. In any case, let me hop on over to tag one and I'll show you what it is that we're going to be dealing with. Okay, so what we have over here is two terminals. This one is SSH'd into my OpenBSD computer, and this one is on my local computer running Debian. And we're looking at the find command. Now, the reason why I've picked the find command is because the find command is a command that has a very obvious use case, which is finding things. In fact, the arguably the GNU <laughs> manual here is a little bit more explicit about what find is for. Um, this says what you typically use it for, whereas the OpenBSD is more talking about how it works. Uh, but the basic idea with find is that you use it to find things. However, it's a very powerful program that takes a lot of options and can do a lot more than just finding things and can do a lot of filtering and setting up the specific criteria upon which you are looking for something. Now, because the program is so complicated, using it is not as simple as just saying, find in my working directory every C file. It's not actually going to do that which is annoying if that's what you want to use find to do. So if it's not working the way you expect, what do you do while you turn to the manual? So let's take a look and see if we can figure out how to use find to find a thing based on the manual. Now, what I am going to do in the open, on the OpenBSD side of things is go to the bottom first. Now, the reason for this is because OpenBSD manuals typically have an example section with examples of how to use it. And the, theoretically, you would expect that the common uses of the command are going to show up as examples. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll go down to the bottom. Here are the examples. 
And what do you know, the very first example on the OpenBSD manual shows you how to look for things in a directory based on some filter. So find command, we're gonna search the whole system and then filter based on the name. And so that is how you would use find to do that. So if we go back here, I guess the only piece that we're missing is I need to use the name flag here. And now you can see we're looking for just C files. All right, that was certainly easy. And I should also point out, and this isn't necessarily a testament to the manual so much as it is, as it is a testament to the core utilities on the system, but notice that the manual is 430 lines long on the OpenBSD side of things. Now let's switch on over to Linux. And just by contrast, the Linux manual is a good 2000 lines longer. And now in documentation, length is not always a good thing because if you're just trying to figure out how to do something, reading 400 lines of manual is uh, quite a bit easier than reading uh, 2400 lines. But with that said, the, a big part of that reason is of course, because the GNU core utils are significantly more feature rich than the OpenBSD ones. So, you know, depending upon your personality and how you feel about software actually having features, you may or may not prefer one approach to the other. In any case, let's do the same thing here and go down to the examples section for the find command. It's gonna take us quite a bit longer because the manual is quite a bit longer, but we'll eventually get there. And here we are. Examples. Now, unlike the examples on the OpenBSD side, which are examples of how to do fairly simple tasks that you would probably generally want to use the command to do. So find a thing, find a thing based on some search criteria with a negation, find a thing, right? Over here, all the examples are pertaining to using the more advanced functionality of the find command as opposed to the more commonly used, presumably, or at least in my case, more commonly used functionality of the find command. So we have using find and then piping it into XOR or XARGs in order to delete things. And then, then they'll go down and show you how you can use find for a bunch of other different things. But they don't have in this manual the simple just find things and tell me where they are. You could arguably say that the very first example does cover that because right here is looking for everything named core in TMP. Um, however, it's embedded in this much larger example. And so to be completely honest with you, if you don't already know how to do it, this is probably not gonna be that helpful to figuring out how to do it. Not nearly as helpful as the OpenBSD example of just, hey, here's how you find things. And the comparison of OpenBSD to Linux documentation is just this kind of over and over and over and over again. There are definitely good manuals on the Linux side and there are definitely bad manuals on the OpenBSD side. Although having said that, I, I don't have any particular examples to mind, but that seems like a pretty non-controversial statement to make. But my general experience has been on this OpenBSD system that if I want to figure out how to do something, it it's much easier to do it using the man page than it is than it is on Linux. I feel like the Linux man pages are typically written more as a list of features of the software and less as a guide of you know how to actually use the software. I just off the cuff, let's take a look at the tar man page as well, because this is a this is another command that's a little bit can be a little bit annoying to deal with. Uh, you know, the classic XKCD comic strip about the nukes about to explode, enter a valid tar command in 30 seconds. <laughs> uh, but let's see what the examples look like on this one. I'm sure the I'm sure that the GNU examples are gonna be fine in this one. Um, how to create an archive, how to create a gzipped archive, creating an archive with a filter, yeah, we're basically create, but do not, da, da, da. Okay, so the examples here are just a, how to create some archives. Interestingly, they don't have a simple example for just 
um, extracting an archive, which I would have expected. Well, let's take a look at the Debian side. Da -da -da. Again, again, I should point out about 1500 lines, 250. The, the, the OpenBSD core utilities are far simpler than the, than the GNU ones. Do, 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 do. Okay, so it looks like this one doesn't even have examples. Yeah, okay, there you go. So <laughs> the, 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 uh, the GNU side doesn't have examples at all, which just boggles my mind for some reason. I, I can I, I can't imagine why you wouldn't have that. And it's entirely possible that there are examples that are buried in the info page, but why the hell would you want to use an info page? <laughs> I don't even have info installed by default. Look at that. <laughs> I'm not going to install that. So yeah, just an actual side-by-side -side comparison of the manuals to, to show some actual evidence that yes, the OpenBSD manuals are probably a bit more useful in the average use case than the, than the Linux manuals. So hopefully if you're one of those people who was left scratching their heads wondering, okay, what does it even mean for the documentation to be better on one side than the other? Hopefully this example actually shows you the degree to which the OpenVSC documentation tends to be more useful. I wonder if it's not a slightly more effective approach than just saying documentation better. I hope that you found this video interesting and helpful as always, and I'll see you in the next one.